Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are all in good health. We ask that all present respect the guidelines for COVID-19, maintaining a social distance of two meters and using hand sanitizers. At the time of Holy Communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of Mass, we ask you to exit through the main doors at the back of the church. Our presider today is Archbishop Hunt. Our gathering chant is number 475 in your Catholic Book of Worship. Spirit. Peace be with you. Today I'm going to use the prayers for the Mass in time of pandemic as we come together to give God praise and to ask for his assistance during this time of the coronavirus. In the readings today we uh, hear of our need, if we wish to have God's mercy, to be merciful to others as well. And so that we may worthily enter into this Mass, let us pause for a moment to call to mind God's mercy and to ask forgiveness for the times that we have failed to be as merciful to others as he is to us. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray, look look with compassion on the afflicted, grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to health care workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love, 
so that together we may give glory to your holy name through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Mortal, you are living in the midst of a rebellious house who have eyes to see but do not see, who have ears to hear but do not hear, for they are a rebellious house. Therefore, mortals, prepare for for yourself an exile's baggage and go into exile by day in their sight. You shall go like an exile from your place to another place in their sight. Perhaps they will understand, though they are a rebellious house. You shall bring out your baggage by day in their sight for baggage for exile. You shall go out of yourself at evening in their sight, as those do who go into exile. Dig through the wall in their sight and carry the baggage through it. In their sight you shall lift the baggage on your shoulder and carry it out in the dark. You shall cover your face so that you may not see the land, for I have made you a sign for the house of Israel. I did just as I was commanded. I brought out my baggage by day as baggage for exile, and in the evening I dug to the wall with my own hands. I brought it out in the dark, carrying it on my shoulder, in their sight. In the morning, the word of the Lord came to me Mortal, has not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said to you, What are you doing? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, the oracle, This oracle concerns the prince in Jerusalem and all the house of Israel in it. Say, I am a sign for you, as I have done so shall it be done to them. They shall go into exile, into captivity. And the prince who is among them shall lift his baggage on his shoulder in the dark and shall go out. He shall dig to the wall and carry it through. He shall cover his face so that he may not see the land with his eyes. I will spread my net over him and he shall be caught in my snare and I will bring him to Babylon the land of the Chaldeans. Yet he shall not see it, he shall shall die there. I will scatter to every wind all who are around him, his helpers and all his troops, and I will unsheathe the sword behind them, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I disperse among the nations and scatter them throughout the country. But I will let a few of them escape from the sword, from famine and pestilence, so that they may tell all of their abominations among the nations where they go, and then they shall know that I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm can be found on page 224 in your Catholic Book of Worship. I will open my mouth. 
Gospel according to Matthew. Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, if a brother or sister sins against me, how often would I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to Peter, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him. Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then the Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you. If you do not forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart, When Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went to the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. The 
each uh, prophet has his own style, and Ezekiel is quite the showman. He dramatizes his message. And today's first reading, we see him showing the people what's going to happen to them because of their unfaithfulness, that they're going to be defeated and be taken into exile. And Jesus has his own style too, and Jesus' style is that of the storyteller. He's always telling parables to get across his message, using analogies to help people better understand the message that he's trying to give them. And in the Gospel passage today, he tells the story of a king who has a number of slaves, and he's trying to settle accounts with them, and one owes him an enormous amount of money, 10,000 talents, uh, which the slave would never be able to repay. And the master has pity on him. But that slave turns around and will not forgive one of his fellow slaves who owes him 100 denarii, which was a very payable amount and, and he probably would have been able to get. You know, when I look at a passage like this, I sometimes find it helpful to try to get into the, to the mindset uh, of the persons involved. And particularly in this passage, I, I like to, I feel the need to ask now, why would this slave who's been forgiven so much turn around and do what he does to his fellow slave? And I think it's because when somebody is merciful to us, when somebody gives us something that we don't deserve, uh, but does it out of a, a sense of graciousness, uh, there's different ways that people can act depending on their personality and uh, pretend, per, 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 uh, depending on uh, how, they, how they wish to accept or not accept this, this gift. The humble person, uh, the person with a true sense of uh, humility, can, can accept a gift from somebody else. And having received that gift, they can rejoice in it. But the proud person is embarrassed and shamed by somebody else's mercy. And instead of them feeling grateful, they become angry. They're embarrassed. And so I can't help but think that this slave, having been forgiven so much debt, and when he left the audience with the king, he knew others had seen what had happened, and he was shamed. Uh, rather than grateful, he was angry. And so when this other slave shows up owing him some money, he reacts, he retaliates out of the shame that comes from his pride. For me, there's a very strong message there uh, that challenges me. How do I react to the gracious goodness of God and of others in my life? It challenges me to be aware of how pride is the most deadly of sins and how it can lead us away from the Lord. So we continue in our Mass today, as we do at each Mass, at some point we will say the Lord's Prayer. And in that prayer we pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. The message of today's readings is that the Lord and the message that we have every day at Mass is the merciful love of God. But the message is also there that if we are truly to be worthy of this mercy that God so freely gives us, we in turn must seek to be merciful in our dealings with others. As we continue in our Mass today, we give God thanks for his mercy and we ask him to help us. But having received so great a gift from him, we may in turn share it with all those we meet. God bless you. I invite you to stand and join with me in offering prayers to God for those who are in need. We begin by praying for our Pope and for all of our religious and civil leaders. We pray for God's wisdom for them and that they may seek always to rule with justice and mercy. For this we pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. We pray for all those who today need to deal in their lives with the sin of pride. We pray that they may be open to God's grace 
and may be able to shun this most deadly of sins. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick and the suffering, especially those who are suffering through this pandemic today. For God's healing grace for them, and for God's grace and strength for those who seek to help them in the medical professions, for this we pray to the Lord. Remember those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven, for this we pray to the Lord. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for us by your power a source of healing and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And, being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim. Thank you. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offering and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit they may partake of this one bread and one chalice. They may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your Blessed Apostles, St. Pontus and St. Hippolytus and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching. We dare to pray, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. An act of spiritual communion. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should, should enter under my room, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Now that we are at alert level two, we are able to have public worship and the reception of Holy Communion at Mass. However, we must take special precautions to ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and prudent as well as respectful way. Please stay in your seat until the usher guides you. The instructions of the ushers and social distancing of two meters must be observed by everyone wishing to come forward for Holy Communion. The person distributing Holy Communion will bear a face mask and will sanitize his or her hands before distributing Holy Communion. Instead of the usual attestation, Amen, by communicants at the time of receiving Holy Communion, there will be one general attestation for everyone before the distribution begins. As communicants approach the front of the communion line, they will sanitize their hands, bow towards the host, in silence receive the host in their hands, move to the side to consume the host, and then return to their pew as directed by the ushers. Any person who cannot receive Holy Communion in the hand can receive a blessing.
the body of Christ. One bread, one body, one cup, one call, one faith, one spirit, present in Let us pray. O God, from whose hand we have received the medicine of eternal life, grant that through this sacrament we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that, as in Cana of Galilee, 
we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. O God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our mission in him can be found in your Catholic Book of Worship, number 439. Thank you.